Strasburg. Mm -hmm. Strasburg, the pitcher. He's a free agent. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, no. Downstairs, the Houston, where Rash and Danny was able to talk to uh, Justin's old teammate, Adam Eaton. Adam, yesterday you didn't want to answer the question of what you thought you'd remember most about this team under the circumstances. Now that you're wearing the hat and you're able to celebrate, what do you think the answer to the question is? Uh, just family. I, I, I know it's cliche to say it, but we, we honestly love one another. We, we did the math and we were together over 230 days this year. Uh, you know, I've seen that more than my life and family, and I wouldn't want to spend it with anybody else. And I, I think you see that on the field as well. You know, Davey going nuts yesterday for us, and then uh, you just never give up attitude, always trusting the guy in front of you to get it done. And uh, like I said, the, the family, we, we, we've struggled together, we stuck, stuck together, and uh, I, don't, I lost for words. It's unbelievable right now. In elimination games, you trail and find a way. How? It's a great question. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think it goes back to family, just trying to trust each other, you know. Uh, I mean, for example, we, get, you know, we want to add on there late, and guys, you know, Zuki and Strauss, uh, and Strauss are all in the dugout, just, you know, getting everyone going the right direction. That, you know, even when we were losing early on, they're just constantly pulling for us. And that is a matter of situation. No one wants to go home, everyone wants to win. And it's a deadly combination. We just keep fighting and keep fighting with Alex to have. And, I mean, look around, it's, I mean, I, like I said, it's crazy. I'm, I'm, what does it mean to you to be a world champion, man? Uh, I feel like I'm eight years old again, watching you know every every year when I was you know growing up when I was a kid, you know watch baseball, watch the playoffs, watch the World Series, and never my wildest dreams I'd ever think that I'd be here talking with you about the World Series. So, I, just surreal for me, absolutely surreal. You're about to go up on a stage and lift a trophy. Enjoy the moment. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate it very much. As Justin pointed out when we were watching the end of the game. The White Sox traded him to Washington for Lucas Giolito, who had a tremendous year for the White Sox, and he might have a great career, but he has not won a World Series. Adam Eaton has, and uh, he made that kind of move every single time. Uh, before we get to Sportsnet Central, let's focus on Houston's decision to bring Zach Greinke out of the game when they did. Seventh inning was a big one for the Washington Nationals. The decision not to use Garrett Cole at all, even though we saw him down in the, in the uh, bullpen. Take us through the uh, the two home runs that turned the tide of this game in the seventh first. Well, I think it started with, do you let Greinke go back out there and face a lineup third time through? This is a really analytics-based organization, but it's hard to ignore what he was doing in this game. He was dominant. His pitch count was in great shape. They weren't getting a whole lot of good swings off him. And then all of a sudden, we get a changeup right here. And no hits it into the seats. It's a two-run ball game. And as we're sitting here watching, we're saying, all right, if they get a base runner, we're going to have to pull him right here. Well, that's exactly what happened after this at bat by Soto and a questionable pitch in this at bat that was called a ball that Greinke really wanted right there. But even to me, Greinke wasn't giving in this at bat. It was almost like he was not giving, let, going to let Soto beat him because he wanted to go after Howie Kendrick. Well, then he gets pulled. Yeah, and you're, you're kind of playing with fire at this point, though, right? You're pitching around Soto, knowing that AJ may come and get you. He goes to Will Harris. Now, Will Harris is one of their guys. I don't have a problem with that at all, except for the fact that we saw Garrett Cole rumbling around that bullpen. He was actually on the mound. So that's the question I need answered from A.J. Hinch after the game, and I'm sure I would hope it's going to be the first question because if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down with my horses. We know he's not rested, but if he was available, which he said he was before this game, he's got a pitch for me. He's got a pitch, so unless something happened down there in that bullpen. And then you do go to your closer in Roberto Osuna, but quite frankly, it turned out to be too late and Roberto wasn't very sharp either. Yeah, and I think Buck Showalter was really, really giving a hard time when in that wild card game, he left Zach Britton in the bullpen and he had to ask a lot of questions about that. So what happened there, it's really, really interesting to see what his answer is gonna be of why he went that way. Maybe Cole warmed up, but he didn't feel great. It was something he only pitched two days ago. So you you were asking Garrett Cole to come in. He's never pitched in relief in the minor leagues. He's never pitched in relief in the major league. So you want him to come in a high leverage situation. There's a lot of people that say, I want my best pitcher in the biggest situation. Was he ready? Was he available? We'll have to get some answers from you know, at the yeah, end. The other option is leaving Granky in there. Yes. He was cruising despite the home run to Rendon. He was still pretty well cruising. So you could leave him in, but then if you do that, and you walk somebody and give up a home run. Now, if you're A.J. Hinch, you're answering a lot of questions and better, better answers than people are expecting. 
on the other side, here's guessing the Nationals are thrilled. They gave $140 million to a guy that they brought in in the sixth inning to pitch three scoreless innings in relief. I do it by team around starting pitchers. Give me as many good starting pitchers as you can get because they're not just starters. We see it every October in the postseason. We see these good starting pitchers come out of the bullpen. Patrick Corbin, three scoreless innings. MVP of this game, maybe, quietly. Mm. Yeah, it was almost like Bumgarner in the yes. postseason. It was, it was very similar to what happened. Maybe not as dominant as Bumgarner was, but he came out and he, he did the job. And these starters, I, you were wondering, we've seen trends, you know, going towards the bullpen, everything else. Our team's going to try and build their rosters around starting pitching again like we saw for so long in baseball. Okay, we'll get historical then. Walter Johnson, a big train, Game 7 of the 1924 World Series as well. So. The Nationals, who were 12 games under 500 on the 23rd of May, have come back, stole the wild card game, beat LA, beat Houston, and they are World Series champions. Our season is now over, but this program isn't. Time to say goodbye with respect to the baseball year and send it off to Ken and Ivanka at Sportsnet Central.